following is a presentation of the Belly Up Sports Media Network. What's up, everybody, and welcome into another episode of the Up Tempo Podcast. I'm your host, Blake Lane, here tonight with my co host, Dustin Smith, and we are excited to have Jay Phillips from Auburn Live with us over on On Three Sports. Jay, man, we're really excited to have you. How are you doing tonight? Doing good, guys. Pleasure to be here. How are y'all? Man, doing great, Jay. Uh, man, a lot's happened here on uh, Selection Sunday. The Auburn Tigers get into the big dance, man. And the first thing I wanted to ask you, Jay, kicking this thing off, um, can you talk a little bit about Bruce Pearl and just the job that he has done since he has been at Auburn, man? Um, making the tournament the last four out of five times that we've had it. Um, just – since he stepped off the plane, man, everything that has come with the program, the lottery picks, the final four, uh, just all the success, Jay. Yeah, I mean, it's really impressive. And, you know, I think a lot of Auburn fans, you know, they've heard it so many times that it almost comes across as some sort of sunshine pumping kind of thing now. But mm -hmm. it's still pretty remarkable to the sense that we've gotten to a point now where it feels like Auburn, you know, it's a, it's gonna it could be a disappointing season without a tournament win and mm -hmm. just you know how however many years ago it is at this point that a team like this would have been a treasure for Auburn you know you're fighting all year you're almost beating these big teams you know this would have had the community rallying behind a team like this under either of the previous coaches and here you are and you know people are losing interest in a team that's going to make the tournament and has a path to win a couple of games, you know, Iowa's a tough out for your first one, but Houston is an interesting team that could be without a star player. And it's had some really questionable outcomes this year. And, mm -hmm. you know, it's, it, 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 you know, you can't say enough about what Bruce Pearl has done though. He really has completely turned around a program and every year about this time you start thinking about it. And like you said, the lottery picks and everything else, it's not just the yeah. NCAA tournament bids. It's, you know, he's completely built up a program there. Yeah, Jay, man. And and that's one thing I've kind of noticed on social media is some of the the Auburn fans who are getting frustrated and, and they're saying, well, uh, it looks like the NIT this year. And I even told Dustin myself, man, I said, the way we're playing right now, like, don't be shocked if this team doesn't find themselves in the NIT. Thank goodness we beat Tennessee. Yeah. Uh, but I see another side of the fan base say, well, uh, just remember where Auburn come from and 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 the Barbie days and and those uh, just frustrating days where we could barely win 11 games a year, man. Um, you know, I think Bruce Pearl is one of the greatest things to ever happen to Auburn University in the athletic department, man. Uh, and now we're coming into this March Madness tournament, man, and you find a way to get in as a nine seed. And you look at, at your Midwest region and Houston's the one seed, but you find yourselves playing in Birmingham, Alabama as your opening round matchup, man, against a quality Big Ten opponent in the Iowa Hawkeyes. How big is this for the Auburn Tigers to be able to take a bus ride to Birmingham, man, and play their opening round game, Jay? Yeah, that's huge. And, you know, you don't. Like I said, I don't I don't love the matchup for Auburn. It's a really okay. efficient offense that doesn't turn the ball over. Mm -hmm. You know, they're gonna that's a tough out, but uh in Birmingham makes everything easier. I read somewhere that the NCAA, somebody with the NCAA, the selection committee or whatever, said they were gonna try and keep lower seeds out of home court advantages. So I, it sounds like Auburn <laughs> probably got really lucky if you know that was uh, a point that they were trying to do and that they Clearly didn't do that one, but, you know, I, I think that's a great – can't get better than that. You, you know you're going to get some fans, like you're yeah. saying. So, plenty of Auburn fans are frustrated, but nobody around the Birmingham area who has funds for a ticket is going to turn that down. It's the NCAA, you know. Nothing beats the NCAA tournament. Even if your team doesn't win, you're going to have a great time. It's going to – chances are it's going to be a great game kind of thing. So that'll be fun. I'm really interested to see what kind of turnout Auburn gets there. Jay, so I know you said that that you don't really particularly like the matchup for the Auburn Tigers. Uh, I got to kick it over here to my man, Dustin, because I know he has uh, some quality questions for you about that matchup. Yeah, for sure. 
Hey, Jay, thanks for being on with us, brother. And shout out to my boy, uh, my brother, Tyler, for getting this set up. And, yeah, uh, of course. Yeah, I <laughs> yeah, appreciate you. But um, so uh, we're just kind of sitting here waiting on this draw. And uh, you see Iowa and you see like the 19 and 13 record. And mm -hmm. oh, OK, well, that, you know, looks like a similar team in that aspect. But I, I look at their scores and you got Chris Murray, he's a six foot eight forward. And then I'm not going to try to say the other kid, six foot nine four. I'm not going to try to say his last name, but <laughs> uh, first name, Philip. Uh, Chris mm -hmm. averages 20 points a game. Philip's at about 14. Those are their top two scores. So I kind of look at that, you know, Janai and Jalen. That's where majority and obviously win, but we get a lot of production out of the front court too. What can we do defensively to make sure that what happened the other night versus Arkansas? doesn't happen again where we're just getting and it's happened a couple of times this year where we're just getting killed down low on second champ points and points in the paint you know i always credit muscle man he's a really good game planner and uh he knew both both matchups he knew auburn was going to go all out on trying to expose arkansas and being a bad shooting team and auburn played a bunch of zone a lot more zone than they played the entire season in both yeah. matchups against arkansas and they did a really good job of getting behind the zone and that was good for all those back cuts and lobs and stuff, but they also got some great rebounding position out of that. So hopefully, you know, Iowa's a team that can shoot, so maybe Auburn's man-to-man -man defense is going to be a little more effective in this one. You got to hope. So getting in that man-to-man, -man, making sure you're boxing out, uh, making sure Janai Broome's not getting pulled out to the three-point line a mm -hmm. lot, which could be, a, could be a thing with this team. Yeah. And, you know, I think that there's – you got to find a way. You know, a lot of it, too, is – I don't know why Auburn is, you know, off and on in terms of their energy and stuff like that. But that Arkansas game, there were just dead periods of it. And mm -hmm. you got to hope that they're just not going to do that in, in, in an NCAA <laughs> tournament game. And who knows with this team, they, it doesn't seem like it's in turn, it, they don't turn it on and turn it off for big mm -hmm. matchups always. But I don't know, man. <laughs> You can't say, you know, I hate when people say, oh, it's all effort in terms of defense and rebounding because there's so much that goes into it. There's so much strategy right. and, you know, positioning and knowing what your opponent's going to do and stuff like that. But the effort's got to be there. And I say that, you know, KD Johnson, he's not in terms of the rebounding, but for the defense, the effort's right. got to be there. And that's just how Auburn is. You know, you got these guys and they're going to be undersized and they're going to be, but they're fast and they have, they can make disruptive plays. They can rebound. Jalen Williams, you know, he's not the biggest dude, but he's a great rebounder when he's mm -hmm. putting in the effort to get that position and to get that, you know, first bounce and stuff like that. And it goes on for all these guys got to have good effort. But I think the man to man defense is going to be definitely uh, in terms of strategy, a big help. Do you think we see more Dylan? Because it just seems to me like down the stretch, um, Dylan's been our best option down low as far as just bringing a physical presence on the defensive end. I'd like to. Hopefully he's feeling a little better, you know, continuing to heal up and maybe that'll be an additional boost just to everything. I'd love to see Dylan kind of break out of his shell and really because he is big, he's strong, but there's a lot of times where it just seems like he needs he can be more of a physical force, you know, uh, that he can just push people around a little more than he does. So I'd love to see that out of him. I see a lot of people saying, you know, Dylan Cardwell needs to be like that enforcer role, even if he doesn't go that far, you know you know Janai Brown's going to play 30 minutes if he can. So yeah. you get Dylan Cardwell in there playing aggressive, not worrying about picking up four fouls a game. And I think that that can definitely make a difference for you. Are you worried about their uh, their starting point guard, Tony Perkins? He's six foot five, averaging about 13 a game. Are you worried about that mismatch with, with win size there? That's always interesting. You know, uh, I'm not so much worried about it. Auburn has been switching Flanagan onto opposing bigger guards a lot. You saw that against uh, Arkansas with him getting a lot of possessions against Nick Smith Jr. And that's not quite the, you know, it's more of him defending a two than him defending a one. But I think Flanagan's perfectly fine getting switched on to bigger guards when need be. And Auburn has so many you know, they've been playing with small guards for however many years now, and Bruce Pearl does yeah. a pretty good job of even, you know, Wendell's a good defender. He's really disruptive. He's smart. He gets in there mm -hmm. and, you know, he gets his hand on a lot of balls and stuff like that. But uh, Auburn's just done a really good job of when. And this year hadn't been so much because there's so many, there's been so many defensive problems on the perimeter. But usually when it's just one small guard, Auburn does a really good job of hiding them. Uh, the Jared Harper, like, junk defenses and stuff like that that Auburn ran were a really good example. But um, 
I think they'll, you know, I'm not, I'm never too worried about it, especially this year, just because it seems like no matter what opposing player Auburn plays, they're going to probably score 20 something points. One of their guards are. <laughs> but, I mean, I'm sure someone on their team is going to have a good game. It's just sort of the yeah. nature of having a bunch of small guards. But mm-hmm. yeah. So let's say that this gets down to a one possession game. Let's just go right back to Arkansas. Okay. So. Maybe a little bit more than 3.5 seconds. Call that timeout with six or seven. Um, but this, these last shot possessions, going back for two years now, um, and we're not going to try to pile on a kid or whatever, but it just – we've seen Wynn take them, even with Jabari and Walker Kessler on the floor, and um, they just haven't they haven't really fallen. Let's say we're in this situation again Thursday versus Iowa. Is Would you like to see something different? And if so, who would you like to see shooting the ball? So I'll probably answer this – I'll come at this a couple different ways. So I think that mm. – Personally, if, you know, in that Arkansas game, like you said, we're going back to that. The way that game unfolded, I really wanted to see Allen Flanagan get another touch there. He hit that huge layup, you know, contested, went down, and he was just absolutely pumped up. Played really good defense on Nick Smith, didn't get it. But one of those two or three, I guess, last possessions, I would have liked to see him get a touch there Mm -hmm. uh, just to see, you know, he'd been playing really well, get, you know, has that three-level scoring ability. So, you know, maybe do something like that. I don't think you always have to go with Wendell. Uh, You have a lot of guys out there. Jalen Williams had been playing well late, too. Uh, You know, he had that big bucket after he came in for Chris Moore. So I think, you know, I wouldn't mind seeing that. So if I'm doing something different, I'm going to go with the hot hand and uh, just feed someone else. And especially against this Iowa State team, uh, Iowa State, Iowa team, they don't have as many you know, their starting five, that is, doesn't really have the size that yeah. either did Arkansas, but that some of the teams Auburn played has. So maybe you go to Janai mm-hmm. Brown in this one as well, if you can get a mismatch or something, especially down low. Uh, but that said, you know, after Wendell took that shot, he uh, sent some tweet out, and I think Katie Johnson and Alan Flanagan, maybe someone else tweeted back, and they were like, you know, we stand behind Wendell taking that shot, basically. So – if it comes down to that, I will not be surprised at all if Bruce leaves it in Wendell's hand. <laughs> yeah, I know. We've seen it. I, I think my thing with that has just been like we talk about this a lot. When you have a guy with like KD, it's my thing is take the good with the bad. So mm-hmm. when he's on fire, when he's mm-hmm. hot, that's when it's like, OK, let's let's take the good because we have to put up with the bad. We have to we see the bad. But when we're, when he's hot, I just feel like you got to let him shoot it. And you know, if anything, he ain't going to be scared. Like that moment's not going to be too big for it. And I'm not saying that it is for win. I'm just saying that the sample size is there to say, okay, maybe, maybe let's try something different. Um, yeah. And, and additionally, onto that, you know, Wendell has hit some big shots too. So I don't hold it, you know, I don't think it's impossible for him to make the shot. Uh, but yeah, like you're saying, Katie, you know, he didn't, he had a chance there late in that game too, and he didn't really get anything going, but it's easier said than done to get those last chance shot off shots off. Cause once you touch the ball, that entire defense is keyed in on you. That's kind of why I wouldn't mind seeing an Alan Flanagan or Jani Brome touch just because those guys can kind of bully their way into wherever they want to get for a shot might not be a good shot, but. Yeah. And Flans over this, this, uh, since conference play started, he seemed to really be comfortable hitting that three coming off the screen when he catches it quick yeah. and just releases it. I kind of thought we might've, I might've seen that right there, especially like you said, him hitting that layup. So if we're going to get out of this weekend and you know, we'll, we'll talk about in a second about this Houston team that we would probably most likely be facing if we did, but who is one guy, if we're going to get to the sweet 16 that has to play well, like we can't do it without him bringing his a game. I'm going to say obviously Wendell, just because if he has a bad game, it's going down <laughs> outside of that though. I feel like Jalen is really that player for Auburn. Uh, Auburn can play well without him, but when Jalen is playing well, it's just, it's contagious. It's that stretch four. It's that glue guy. You know, how many times in, over the over the stretch of the past couple of games has he had, you know, four plus assists and no turnovers kind of thing. Uh, when he's playing game well, it's just, yeah, he, he just changes up everything for Auburn. Gotcha. So, um, go ahead, go ahead Dustin. No, go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, I was going to say, so interesting stat that uh, your your colleague Justin Hokuson put up, I read uh, on Auburn Live. We've actually won one game in the last 10 tournament appearances. So 
when we get there, you know, we do win a game. And during the 80s, there was a three-game stretch where we won as an eight seed all three times. I do believe I read that correctly. So it didn't yeah. work out versus the one seed any of those times. But you talk about, okay, it's crucial for Wendell to play well. Um, Blake, I want your answer on this as well. My key to this game is you talked, you mentioned that Iowa does not turn the ball over. I think mm -hmm. that for us, obviously, protecting the ball is crucial, but finding a way to at least get double digit points in transition, at least getting enough turnovers to where we find 10 to 14, 15 points in transition. That to me is the key to the game. What do you think about that? And Blake, what is your answer? I mean, yeah, I agree. Getting into transition is good for this team, especially with. You know, they struggle in the half court offense. So finding a few easy points is always big. Guys, I, I'll be straight up honest with you. It's been a thing for me with Auburn basketball for years. We got to mm -hmm. hit free throws, man. <laughs> uh, the, the other night against Arkansas, uh, I think we were 18 for 27. Yeah. Uh, and, and that's just the biggest thing to me, man. You're not going to win a lot of basketball games if you don't hit free throws. And uh, especially down the stretch, I feel like we get – the West Virginia game pops out to me a lot is under three minutes. It's like, we just can't hit a free throw. We get to a one and one, uh, anything like that. We miss the front end and it's just, it's so aggravating, man. Uh, and, and guys that have been there and they've been in the moment like KD and Jalen and, and it's just, um, it, it's bad, man. It, it, it's, it's bad. So I'm, I'm going to say you got to hit your free throws, uh, and another thing, I, I think KD Johnson's got to play well because I think when KD plays well, this is a completely different Auburn basketball team. And we've seen it over the past couple of games. Uh, he's been getting it going um, on offense. We know what kind of player he is on the defensive end. Uh, but is if KD is stroking the three, man, and, and getting to the rim, I, I, I really do believe this Auburn team is different. And, Jay, what I wanted to ask you, man, off of that is – if Auburn does find a way to beat Iowa and they get to that second round matchup against who we all believe will be Houston, man, how do you think Auburn matches up against the Houston Cougars? You know, I, in terms of the one seeds, that would probably be the one that I think Auburn matches up best with just because mm -hmm. Auburn knows how to play that game that Houston likes yep. to play, but is also, it's hard to say struggled in, but you know, just, getting it, you know, mucking the game up, getting it dirty, making it bad, playing ugly kind of thing. And like we've seen Auburn play against Tennessee and Northwestern and several other games, I think that – I think Auburn can really turn it into a defensive fight against Houston. And they have a lot of – you know, Houston's a great team, especially if Sasser's playing. And I think that that could be a problem for Auburn if Sasser's at full strength. Uh, that's just – that's one of those guards that scream, you know, Kendrick Davis and Eric Stevenson, not so much, but you know, a lot of those guys that are yeah. those physical bully point guards who can get downhill and stuff like that have really given Auburn problems. So I think that that's not a great matchup in the backcourt maybe, but overall, I don't think that it's a bad matchup. Auburn's got good style for Houston. I think, you know, make it into a defensive fight. Well, Jay, would would the city of Birmingham actually burn down if Alabama and Auburn both made it to the Sweet Sixteen? That would be interesting, man. And, <laughs> you know, I think Alabama they got a good they got a good path, but I am interested to see if Alabama. You know, I'm I'm hoping that they have to play West Virginia, not mm -hmm. only for maybe a potential upset alert, but also I just think that that could be a really fun clash of styles and yeah, West Virginia. That first game, you know, you'd love to see Eric Stevenson put up 30 points and that turn into mm. the kind of game that Auburn got in with West Virginia. So <laughs> well, Jay, man, look, I'm I'm I looked at the at the bracket and everything in the Midwest region, man. Uh who is one team in that region that you kind of look at and and just and just put your finger on and say, Hey, that team right there, they could make a deep run to the Elite Eight or Final Four. Honestly, let me let me give it another look. Okay. I haven't really studied the entire bracket that much yet. I've been <laughs> looking into Iowa, but you know. I think Vandy got hosed. Yeah. Yeah. I was hoping Vandy would get into it. They've been playing so well. Reminds me of the year that Auburn missed it. Can't remember which year it was, but that Auburn. 2010. 
Yeah, the NIT run year. Yeah, 2010. Yep. Yeah. Y'all got yeah. any teams in the bracket though that you're looking at? Well, I uh... um on in the Midwest region, man. Um, I kind of look, <laughs> um, I kind of look at which Texas they're a two seed, but uh, Miami at the five seed, mm-hmm. and um, I really like Indiana, man. I really like Indiana. Um, I, I yeah. think they could. I think they could cause some problems. Uh, Mississippi State playing Pitt in the play-in game. I think that's going to be a good game. That will yeah. be a good game. I think that's going to be a good one. Of the play-ins. Yeah, yeah I, I love, love it, like, man. Uh, Xavier, too. You know, that's a three-seed, but mm-hmm. tricky th- three-seed. Kennesaw State, it's an interesting be- – that'll be a fun game, possibly. But A&M at the seven-seed, that could be interesting, too. Um uh, mm-hmm. Especially if they get that Texas game in the second round, that'll do be you, fun. <laughs> excuse me, Jay. Do you think that A and M fans who are crying saying they got seated too low? Like, what do you think about that, man? Because I I don't because of their non conference schedule. I think they got put right where they belong, uh, and the fact that they also lost some of those non con games. Uh, I just I don't really buy into the we're seated too low stuff. Yeah, I, I, you know, I'm kind of down on the SEC as well this year, and I know that yeah. that's been, you know, people are saying whatever, but the SEC doesn't have the same sort of top seeds that it had in the past couple of years, and the shooting across the conference has just been as bad as it's ever been. A couple other factors as well in there, so I don't think that they're going to weigh, you know, a perfect, not even perfect, but, you know, a great conference yeah. schedule like they would in past years, so – Seven, you know, might be a little low, but five would probably be a little high. So, you know, I think they might, you know, you can maybe argue for a seed there. But, well, Jay, give me, man, tough. Uh, but I got to put you on the spot, man. Give me a final four. I, I got to get, I got to get a final four prediction, man. Oh, man. I do like Purdue. I'm going to put Purdue in there. Okay. Um, Man, Midwest though is interesting. I don't know who to who to pick out of the Midwest. Let me go with a little bit of an upset in this one. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go with. Oh man, I'm gonna go with Texas. Yeah. So I'm gonna do Purdue and Texas. Oh man, UCLA. <laughs> Great pick. Purdue, Texas, UCLA, and Baylor. There we go. Baylor. You couldn't, yeah. you, you couldn't say the other one, could you? No, I couldn't. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't say the other one. Dustin, man. So, uh, so I'm going to say on Alabama, though, I've been – I'm skeptical on Alabama still. I mm-hmm. think that a lot of their the things that they're really good about, I think they're going to be – I think they're a great team. Like, I'm not saying they're bad or anything. But yeah. I think that their length and their style of play has looked a lot better against the SEC than it does against a lot of other people. Just because the SEC hadn't been a great shooting and scoring conference, Alabama has been, you know, the best shooting and scoring team in the conference. So it's just – you know, it, it gives them an easy way to run away with games. You look at three of their last four non-conference games, Memphis, Gonzaga, Oklahoma, you know, night and day yeah. compared to the dominance we've seen in the SEC. So, you know, maybe they've, you know, just improved throughout the year and everything's going good. And maybe the Gonzaga mm-hmm. game was just so bad because Timmy and, you know, who knows, but I think that they put a lot of wear and tear on their guards and that they, are very shooting dependent. So it's hard to pick. It's hard for me to pick them to go all out in the NCAA tournament, but it's great stuff. Yeah. (laughs) Great stuff, man. I love the breakdowns. Uh, Dustin, you got anything else for uh, Jay, man? Um, Am I crazy for thinking that uh, Lafayette has a really good shot at beating Tennessee right out the gate? Yeah, that one's interesting. Yeah, I, I really think thought about I, that, I, I, but you know, it's Tennessee without Ziegler. I I picked that one too. I'm not gonna lie. As yeah. soon as I saw yeah. it, I, I said, "Hey, that <laughs> that Lafayette, watch out with no Ziegler." Uh, and and Tennessee sometimes just uh, being 
really uh, struggling on the offensive end and not being able to score the basketball, and then you, you lose a guy like him, man, uh, it's tough. So, uh, yeah, I, I definitely – that was one of the ones where uh, I looked at it and for sure, Dustin. Well, uh, last thing I got for you, Jay, we're seeing a lot of – a lot of stuff popping up on Twitter, you know, message boards, a lot of stuff coming up on Auburn Live, too, about seems like we're kind of active in this portal. Um, what yeah. is – what do you – I don't even know how to ask it. Just what would be the, the biggest position in need, I guess? Like if you had to say one thing that you we, we just got to have um, come out of the portal, because it looks like Aiden's going to be the only high school. Yeah, and, you know, I, it's not too late to see if, you know, there could be another high school – Maybe somebody decommits. Maybe somebody reclassifies. So you mm -hmm. never know. But in terms of the portal, it's also dependent on who leaves. If Alan Flanagan and or Jalen Williams, you know, decide to forego that super senior year and take mm -hmm. off, then whichever one of those guys leaves, their position becomes the biggest need unless mm -hmm. Yohan Traor is ready to step up at the four. But uh, so if that happens, I think the wing is probably the biggest point of need if Flanagan leaves get somebody in there then again you got chance westry maybe he can switch over so i think that two or three position either way is the biggest need aiden holloway i think can play some two i think he'll probably play some one and some two but i think you know even you're gonna have chance westry even if katie johnson returns i'd really like to see auburn go out and try and get the sort of impact transfer that they've had at center the past couple of years as a two three yeah. ball handler see if they can't you know if you end up chasing somebody off it oh, happens. Yeah. yeah. You know, it's part of the process, uh, especially with the transfer portal. It's not going to be hard for any of these guys to find a new home. But yep. yeah. I think you got to get somebody in there. If you can get a 6'4, 6'5 guard who's been a proven scorer at a high level, yeah. that's yeah. going to give this team. And that way, if Flanagan does come back, then, you know, you're rolling. Chance Westry's coming off, you know, six man of the year kind of potential. If he can do that, if he, you know, if, if the hype that Bruce Pearl has given him is true. But uh so it sounds like you think Chance and Johan will both be back. Yeah, I kind of do. Um, you know, I, I never speculate that guys are gonna leave unless there's some reason to, but those mm -hmm. two guys have both seemed to be engaged and Bruce Pearl has spoken pretty, you know, in favor of both of them, especially Westry, even you know, talking about sort of shutting Westry down and stuff, but yeah saying that he thinks he's going to be a great player and so forth. Okay, cool. Well, Jay, man, uh, before I let you get out of here, man, and uh, I'm from Mobile, Alabama, and uh, everybody knows uh, LeBaron Filan uh, yep. committed to the Auburn Tigers. Man, how high are you on LeBaron? I got to know, man, uh, I'm super excited that he picked Auburn. Yeah, I'm, I'm excited about that one too. I think that that 2024 class is just so interesting for Auburn. Got mm -hmm. LeBaron, Tahad, and – Peyton Marshall and all three of those guys could be could end up being all conference players for sure. Mm -hmm. uh, LeBaron though, he's such a good scorer already. You know, he has the the IQ and whatnot to just take over games scoring. Not playing the greatest competition, so I you know yeah. I, I'm interested to see what he does on this upcoming AAU circuit. But he's mm -hmm. got so many tools. He's got great size. He's got a great handle. I think he's going to definitely translate in terms of. He's going to get to college, and I think he's going to have a lot of potential at college. I think it could take him a year or two to get things rolling just because unless he does transfer to a major high school team or something like that, that step up is going to be significant. Um, but I think he's in a good spot. You know, he's not he's not going to have the expectations of a top 10 player like J.D. Davidson had or something like that either. Yeah. So hmm. I really like him, though. I think, you know, very interesting player. He has lots of tools. Absolutely, man. And uh, I love that a guy from, from Mobile, Alabama is headed up to the Plains, man. So, oh, yeah. Jay, man, we're going to uh, wrap this one up. We appreciate you for joining us. And like yeah, always, um, Dustin, we'll let you have the final word, man. I just appreciate you for being on, Jay. Um, you guys know, like, and subscribe to uh, the channel. Help us out, boost that algorithm. And, and Jay, plug everything you got to plug, baby. Yeah, man, y'all can follow me. I got my Twitter here, at A-U-B-A-W-N, and uh, mm -hmm. got all my work and whatnot linked through there somehow. Well, that's awesome, man, Jay. We really appreciate it again. And with that, we'll leave y'all with a war damn eagle, and we will catch you on the next one. We're out.